What is going on, everybody? We are back with another episode. It has been, oh, it's been a while, guys. It's been like three weeks. How have you been? How have you been? It's been a long time. Quick update, got a new fresh hat. So I promised subscriber Alicia North that as soon as I completed the underpart challenge, I was going to get a new hat. Now, I think he was hoping I was gonna get something other than the Raptors, but come on, guys. Gotta support the boys. I know we lost, but we're still an incredible team and I'm, I just, I just love my Raptors. I love my Raptors. So we got a fresh new Raptors hat to kind of embark on this new golf journey that is going to be starting. This is phase two of the golf journey. And so needed a fresh hat to commemorate that. Anyway, that's enough about the hat. Whew. Okay, since my last video update, honestly, it's, it's been a crazy feeling since completing this challenge. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, one is I didn't think I was actually going to complete the challenge on time at first. I, I, I guess like coming from, you know, my day job in music, like I'm so used to goals and like results being so subjective. And the reason for this whole challenge was to have an objective goal. And so when I actually met it, it was a quite a, a, a weird experience to actually see something through and then have like an objective metric to hit. Cause I've spent the last 10 years chasing metrics that are subjective. And so it was just nice to hit something and and have it be real and, and do it completely on my own. So what a incredible feeling, but what it really illuminated to me and what that round really did for me was just kind of bring a ton of clarity as to what the game of golf like really is and what it takes to actually like play well. And I've been really stewing on this fact and I wanted to kind of come back to you with a video. Once I had distilled that down to a point where I could express it concisely. And so this is gonna be my attempt at that and I'm probably gonna refine it as we go through the next round of videos, but this is kind of the first iteration of it that actually seems to make sense and what I hope can bring value to you and your golf game. So as I reflect back on my under par journey, I think what are the things that help me achieve my goals and how can they help you? So the first thing is my four step process that I had outlined in a previous video actually worked. And I think that's just something, if, if you're looking for something to, to follow as kind of a guideline to improve your golf game, whether it's under par, breaking 80, breaking 90, I, I think these principles can bode well for you to just kind of achieving any score goals. So my four step process, like it, it actually works and, and it's something I'm actually gonna continue to refine and work on as I go to my next stage. But as just a quick recap, so, you know, step one is fix, was fix my body. And so I spent a lot of time over the COVID kind of break, building my body up to play a ton of golf and to execute the golf swing at a high level. And, at, you know, at the time of breaking my goal, I had played, I think over 165 rounds. Guys, I have no injuries, I have no stiffness. Like I have a little bit of soreness sometimes on this left side, but like I was able to withstand a ton of golf as a result of keeping my body at a certain level of shape. Now, I think, you know, for a lot of us who may not play as often, I think you can keep some sort of basic golf, play, basic fitness going for yourself. One, it'll just, it's good for health. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a fitness professional. Please consult somebody that is an actual fitness professional before you're doing anything. Um, but, you know, for me, I found that by having a certain level of fitness, it just made the golf swing easier. Cause I know last year when I was trying to get better at golf, but I was sitting all the time, my back was destroyed because the imbalances in my core and in my back were just absolutely brutal. You know, that's just something that I think a lot of us deal with as we have to manage work and golf. Something to consider, you definitely need to invest more time in your overall fitness. I think that's beneficial in general as being a human, but specifically when it comes to golf, you need, you need to do that. Step two in my under par process was obviously getting new clubs and getting properly fit for clubs, getting the tools that I can use to properly execute on the golf course. Now, what's crazy is, is that I had gotten fit, I had saw those things, but as you saw in my updates, once I got my new driver and I could consistently rely on hitting that driver properly, I had under par in two weeks. And so that's what's crazy about getting clubs that work for you. I would say, listen, I understand all of us are on a different spectrum of where we prioritize golf and where we wanna spend our cash. So am I saying you have to go get a top of the line fitting? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is you need to find tools that you feel comfortable swinging effortlessly with. So for me, I wanna compete at a high level when it comes to golf. I chose to make a certain amount of investment because I wanted to execute at a certain level. Now that entailed, going to TXG and getting like the top of the line fitting because 
where I see myself going in golf is different than maybe you. However, what I wanted out of that and what I think can be found maybe through a, a variety of different avenues is I feel a certain level of comfortability with my clubs that allows me to swing without thinking. In my under par round, it, and if you saw, you know, I made another video called, you know, searching for the feeling. It's this level of effortlessness um, and seamlessness between my ability to be conscious and my ability to execute. And it's something I, I, I feel in music. It's something I got to in music. It's essentially a flow state where I can execute without having to think about the technical tools. And in that under par round, that was the first time I'd been able to execute at that level without even thinking. That entire round, guys, I was not nervous at all. In terms of my capabilities that day, the, the, me and the clubs were one, and I didn't have to worry about anything. I was hitting my driver as pure as can be, which was setting me up perfectly, and you know, you saw it all unfold. So. What you're looking for out of your clubs is actually that mind club connection where it's not an impediment. And if, and if you have to think or if you're worried, that's a problem. And that's something you need to address. The third part of the process was practice, practice, practice. And I did a ton of practicing. I, I think sometimes we approach golf hoping that we're gonna get certain amount of results despite the fact that we don't practice. I think we spend a lot of time like wishing we're gonna get these great scores and these miraculous scores are gonna appear out of nowhere. But what I've learned is that it's not, it's, it's like anything else. You need a certain level of repetition. You need a certain level of discipline to refine the craft and refine your approach to it so that you're not nervous. What allowed me to be comfortable with my clubs and what allowed me to hit certain shots was just the constant repetition. I had hit so many wedge shots. When I hit that wedge Red shot on hole number four that spun back and set up a birdie. I have hit that shot hundreds of times this summer to the point where when I stepped up to it, I was like, oh, I think it was like 85 yards. And I, you know, I knew the course. So I'm like, oh, I got a hill to work with. So I just got to hit, you know, a 90 yard shot, spin it back. Boom. And that was it. That was my thought process. I wasn't nervous, nothing. And it was because of that level of practice. Because of some of those things, I'm able to get up and down you know, a lot more often. I, I'm not worried about putting myself in certain situations. And that's a huge thing that I think as golfers, we don't practice enough. We spend a lot of time playing and I get it. Playing is amazing. But I think the lack of practice makes you angrier because you don't have that, that level of comfort. And as a result, when you hit a bad shot, it, it just, oh, it sucks. My saying kind of with golf is the amount of practice you put in equals the amount of angry you're allowed to be. If you're not practicing, you shouldn't be angry when you hit a shot into the woods because you're not practicing enough to not hit it into the woods. But when you are practicing enough, then yeah, you can justify some of that anger because you're like, why is this happening? But practice is so important and detailed, proper practice because you want to practice game-like situations. I can't explain to you the, 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 how cool it feels when the practice locks in and you can just play. That's, that's such a, that's, that's the feeling I wish for, for anybody is, is just that ability to execute. It's incredible. And then the fourth part of the strategy, which is develop a game plan. The thing I've learned the most is that shooting good scores doesn't happen by accident. Yes, there are going to be days where you're hot. You're hitting shots that are uncharacteristic to where you're at. And those days happen. And I've had those days. And there have been a, quite a few days where I thought that was going to be the day. But it wasn't because I didn't have a game plan. I was just kind of batting above my capability that day. What a game plan helps you solidify is that it helps you plot your way around the course and maximize your strengths and your weaknesses. An example of that, if you go to my under par round, hole number 13 is a par four. I'd been hitting driver insanely well that day. Insanely well. I think I hit like the, my fairway percentage was stupid. My greens and regulation percentage was, I think like done. I think I hit like 16 or 17 at 18 greens that day. So I had all the confidence in the world to swing driver on that hole. However, it was downwind and it was bringing in too much risk. So I ended up just literally bunting a four iron out there that rolled like crazy and I had an easy shot in. Had I not had a game plan, I could have easily just said, oh, I'm hitting driver amazing today. Let's just, let's swing driver. It could have turned out great or it could have completely sewered me. I don't know because I didn't do it, but I'm thankful I didn't because it preserved my round. And I think there are a lot of times during your rounds where you're deviating from your game plan to maybe hit a hero shot or hit a shot that's out of character. It's not, that you, it's not that it's out of your capability, it's just not a high percentage shot. And does hitting that shot, if it doesn't pay off, does that sewer your whole round? 
that's something to consider. And it's a thing I've learned with playing with a lot of better players is that they, they very much have a game plan and they understand their strengths and their weaknesses and plot their way around the course accordingly. And there are a lot of times where they are not aggressive off the tee because they know they can set themselves up better and because they've practiced and because they know their short game, they're a lot more dialed in. All you really want is to put yourself in a position to you know, hit a pitching wedge in or, or whatever. And as I started to progress, I realized, no, that's, that's the point. When I was a worse golfer, I would just try and swing driver and try and hit these hero shots. That's not the move. That's not the percentage play. When you're trying to score, you just wanna kind of put yourself in positions to maximize where you can convert. And then the fifth part of all this, and this is the part I didn't initially have in my four step process, but is actually the most profound part of this whole thing. And that is the mental game. The mental game is it's just such an insane part of, of what this is. And after hitting under par, I cannot explain to you the mental lift and clarity that this has provided. If you saw my previous video on kind of my background uh, on why I did this challenge on a personal level, I didn't understand how many mental demons you have to conquer to really hammer it home in golf. It, it, you know, Eric Anders Lang said something really great in one of his podcasts where he said golf is just simply a mirror to who you are and what's going on. And, 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 and that could not be more true. There were so many times where I was confronted with certain obstacles throughout this challenge. And I would, I, the, and those mental demons would just come back and, you know, assault me in such a vicious way mentally. And it would destroy my round. It would destroy my self-belief. It would destroy my capability. Uh, it would just completely sewer me for the, for the round. And, and battling through that is such an interesting process. And I'm, and I'm sure that's something that affects all of us because you know, that inability to believe in yourself in the key moments is such a defining thing in, in being good at the sport. What was crazy about that, that under par day was that I had zero doubt in my ability to do it. I was, once I hit that tee shot on three, that par three, I, when I striped that four iron, I was, I was like, this is the day. I was already confident going in that that was the day and I had played the first two holes really well. But that third hole, the confidence I got from absolutely striping that four iron, I was like, this is it. Oh, I, 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 can, I can make this happen. And the subsequent confidence that came from that, I, the, nothing, nothing bad ever crept into my head during that round. And I was just so calm, level-headed. I knew I could bail myself out of shots. I knew I could score. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, there's this zenness. And that's what I've felt since. The last three weeks, I've just played golf for fun. I've shot under par, I've shot over par. It didn't matter. But what was great was that at no point did I get so down on myself that I was, was overly negative in a detrimental way. If the round wasn't going my way, I went, ah, you know, today's not the day, but I know I've been there before, I can dig myself out of this. It was never like those really down moments that I was having leading up to this, where I was, just completely be like, what am I doing? What, like, like I am just horrendous. And it was so cool to finally conquer that. I, that's been something I've been dealing with for years. And so to conquer that was actually just a, a slightly overwhelming at first because I had just been dealing with so much self-doubt across the board. And the ability to actually rein that in, I can't explain what it feels like. It's, it's, it's an incredible feeling. And, and when it comes to golf, the ability to just take some of that adversity and deal with it, take your medicine in the right points, but then also be able to believe in yourself enough to step on the gas pedal and take advantage of moments to score. That's that emotional volatility. And in the past three weeks, it's just, it just, it golf's a different game. It's a different game for me. I shot four under today and that's with six birdies and I, you know, I had two bogeys and those two bogeys were avoidable mistakes, but it was just, it's so different mentally. Now I was two under going into 17 and I'm on the tee. I'm not nervous. I'm like, Oh, this is an easy shot for me today. Let's dial this in. Boom. Made birdie. Final hole was a par five. And I'm going, Oh, I'm absolutely going to strike this driver and we're going to make birdie here. And I ended up getting on in three, missed the Eagle putt, unfortunately, but made the birdie. And 
that's because I wasn't worried about my ability to swing the club or if I suck or if any of those things. I didn't have any of that mental blockage. I was just thinking, oh, you're awesome. Like, this is great. Let's step on the gas pedal and let's get some results here. That is the most, that is the feeling I wish for all of you watching. That is the, that is what I hope you can bring into your golf game is that ability to go, I'm awesome. I can swing and I can do this. And if you bring that into your golf game, I can pretty much guarantee that you will get infinitely better and achieve whatever score goals, you know, are what you want. That four step process I talked about at the beginning is all great, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to you. Golf is us. Golf is, is you as a human out there battling yourself and battling the course and that ability to stay in the right mental headspace and not get down on yourself and not just completely wreck yourself mentally is such a valuable skill. And I think it translates across, you know, all aspects of life, but just specifically magnified in what we do with golf. I feel like it, it really highlights it. And so I wish that kind of mental freedom for all of you because I cannot explain how good it feels to finally hit that. So anyway, guys, Thank you so much for watching. I apologize for my absence in the past three weeks. I've honestly just been taking it in and just loving playing golf and being like a little kid again, enjoying golf. And uh, it's been great, but don't worry, there's a lot more content coming. Also, I'm going to be heading to a warmer place for the winter. So this channel is going to be consistent. We are doing off season training. It is going to get crazy. Um, and I will unveil what phase two of the goal of this channel will be now that phase one is complete. So stay tuned. Thank you so much again for watching and liking and subscribing. This community is growing. I'm so thankful for that. <sighs> Hope you get some golf in because it's getting cold here and in some of these places we don't have a lot of time left. So hope you get some in, hope you enjoy it and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.